Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Ale. Welcome back to my world of stocks. Hope you're all doing well out there. Unfortunately, we are going through some very shaky times right now. Inflation has been on the rise for a while now. We did so much spending during the global health crisis. And as a result, we are very likely to see interest rates start climbing back up again. And as if all of these issues weren't enough for us to be dealing with constantly as stock market investors, well, we also have growing conflict between Russia and Ukraine, which many people are very afraid could turn into a much larger war if other countries start joining in. And of course, a big war like that would be very bad news for basically everyone around the world, unfortunately. So in today's video, I wanna discuss every single one of those topics. I wanna to share with you my thoughts, my opinions on each one of them. And I wanna to try to answer the question, should I be buying stocks during a time like this when things are so shaky and uncertain? Uh, or should I be waiting for what many people feel is an inevitable stock market crash that may just be on the horizon. We're gonna discuss all of that and more in today's video. And of course, I will also let you know what I plan to do myself, what I'm doing right now, what I plan to do. It's gonna be a very interesting video. Of course, these are very depressing topics. Unfortunately, thoughts and prayers always go out to anyone affected by everything that's been going on. We've been living through some crazy times, but please hit the like button if you do enjoy this update. Uh, it does mean a lot to me, it does help the channel, but let's go ahead and start by taking a look at how the stock market has been holding up so far. And we'll start tackling each of these issues one by one and I'll make some predictions as we go through it. Okay, so taking a look at the market really quick, here's the S&P 500. And you can see that we initially dipped a little on the news that Russia was invading Ukraine, but that barely lasted as the market proceeded to recover and is actually up slightly for the week, which to me makes zero sense because the conflict has only really escalated since then. But my guess is that the market gained confidence from the US sanctions imposed on Russia and is probably thinking that things will start to deescalate at some point, but we'll talk more about that in a second. Either way, things have already been been volatile even before the conflict started, while the S&P uh, 500 is definitely up a lot at about 80% over the past five years, it is actually currently in a correction as it has now fallen by over 10% from its highs and currently sits near the midpoint of its 52 week range. Tech heavy NASDAQ is up even more at about 130% in the past five years, but is also down more on this most recent dip at around 17% down from its highs and is well into the bottom half of its 52 week range. And just a few days ago, it was even down over 20% which is considered a full-on bear market. And like I said, none of that even had to do with the Russian invasion. It was actually uh, purely economical from all the spending and lockdowns that we've been doing during the global health issue. At the midpoint of last year, the United States had already spent over $5 trillion just on the pepperoni alone. By the way, if you're new to the channel, I have to say words like pepperoni and global health issue because of censorship problems. Anyway, at today's value, that spending is about half a trillion dollars more than what we spent for the entirety of World War II. That's insane. If you, think, if you think that's crazy, when you add all the money printing and spending that we've been doing, so combining the pepperoni, the quantitative easing, and the infrastructure spend, it totals to $13 trillion last year, which was a whole trillion dollars more than literally all the money that we've spent on our 13 largest wars in history combined. That is unbelievable. And we've also spent more than virtually any other country in the world. According to National Review and the Tax Foundation, the U.S. spent 27% of GDP just on the pepperoni. The only other industrialized country in the world that spent more was Singapore at 29%. The result is a massive increase in money supply for not as many goods, which was also affected by supply constraints because of lockdowns and new regulations. And all of that, of course, leads to inflation. Normally, you'd expect to see around a 7% increase in money supply per year, but quantitative easing doubled that to around 14% over the past decade, and the global health issue took that to a whole nother level with increased estimates as high as 27%. As a result, we've started to see insanely high levels of inflation. In fact, we've now seen a higher inflation level in America than any other time over the past four decades. That's pretty crazy. But as stock market investors, why is any of this important and why should we even care? Well, 
For one, inflation has a disastrous effect on consumers, and given that we're a consumer-driven economy, it thus also destroys the economy. There are, however, tools to combat inflation, and arguably the strongest of those is to increase interest rates, which makes borrowing money more expensive, which encourages people to save more, and thus results in less money circulating in the economy, which ends up cooling it down and lowers the inflation rate. As a result, many analysts are expecting rates to continuously rise throughout this year, in fact, Goldman Sachs is predicting as many as seven rate increases just this year alone. Not everyone agrees and most estimates are a bit lower, but the fear is that insanely high inflation will lead to insanely high rate hikes at a time when the economy is already in horrible shape and we have gigantic amounts of debt at already more than $30 trillion. The problem with that is that more money tends to get printed to service that debt, which leads to more inflation, which leads to higher interest rates, and eventually everything collapses. And the way interest rates directly affect the stock market is primarily through two devastating blows. One is by making it more expensive for these companies to borrow money and service their debt, and the other is by consumers spending less money, which will affect their sales and profits. The conclusion is that these companies are no longer performing as well as they used to, and thus the stock market needs to drop in price in order to compensate for that, thus oftentimes resulting in a crash. And as if all of this couldn't possibly be bad enough for us, we now have the Russia-Ukraine situation that many fear could lead to a larger world war between many countries. So let's quickly touch on that and how it can affect the stock market, and then I'll try to make sense out of all of this and let you know what I'm doing myself. Okay, so I don't want to get overly political here, so I'm just going to keep it short and to the point. Russia argues that Ukraine's modern government that replaced a pro-Russia president has since been hostile towards Russians and has even made claims that they bully and murder them, so he intends on saving them, uh, Putin does. And on top of that, he also claims that the US and NATO are encroaching on Russia's borders through Ukraine and that Russia does not feel safe with the idea of Ukraine working or allying with you know, those other countries instead of Russia. Whether any of that is true or not, I'm just telling you what Russia is claiming in order to justify their invasion of Ukraine. Now, for Ukraine's part, they of course deny all of these allegations and argue that Russia is just trying to gain more power in an effort to gain control of what was once part of the Soviet Union. And generally, I would say that most media outlets as well as most countries have so far been siding with Ukraine on the issue, and that's including the United States, the United Kingdom, and France. But on the flip side, Belarus has mostly been helping Russia, while others like Cuba and even China have been more willing to blame the United States for escalating the conflict rather than preventing it. And of course, the fear is that if a giant powerhouse like China gets involved and starts to help Russia, then we could really start to see things get ugly. Don't forget, China has been wanting to invade Taiwan for a long time, and this could present them with an opportunity to do so. And in a much larger war that involves these type of powers, you'd likely see heavy damage to infrastructure, all kinds of disruptions to supply chains, and heavy shortages to certain go goods and com commodities, which we're already seeing a large spike in oil prices at the worst possible time, but you also see a lot of money printing to compensate for new expenses and to help people, which would also lead to more inflation than we already have. And of course, you'll likely see many people losing their lives, which is not only tragic on its own, but it would also mean a smaller workforce and less consumers. All of this would cause heavy damage to the economy. However, there's also the possibility that the stock market barely cares at all about the Russia-Ukraine conflict, especially if things you know, stop escalating or even de-escalate, which could happen at any moment if larger peace talks and negotiations start happening. And to further back this argument, we can even look at history and see that global conflicts tend to not really bother the stock market as much as you might think. In fact, if you look at most conflict-related events over the past eight or so decades, most of the pain happened within the first month out of fear and panic, but that tends to be followed by large recoveries over the next like 3, 6, or 12 months. And sometimes you don't even really see a decline in the first month at all. So what does all of this tell me as an investor? Well, to be honest, it pretty much reminds me of what I've always believed in, which is that I cannot time the market, but as long as I have a long-term mindset, I will most likely be okay. Now, in relation to what happens with Russia and Ukraine, that's really anybody's guess where we go from here. My prediction is that rather than us marching into World War III and seeing this gigantic war where pretty much everything is destroyed, 
I think a more likely scenario is that we start to have negotiations or peace talks and things de-escalate from here, or Russia just kind of takes over Ukraine and the world just accepts it and we move forward from there and you'll probably have internal conflict Ukrainian people trying to take back Ukraine and you know Russia fighting them off and that's probably going to be something that lasts for many years and again I'm not I don't want to get into all the po politics of all that stuff that's not what this channel is about I'm just saying that I think those are more likely scenarios where either Russia just takes over Ukraine and the world accepts it or we de-escalate from here and things kind of go back to where they were and maybe we have some negotiations and the US and NATO agree to kind of back off a little bit. Who knows, there's, there's a multitude of things that could happen, but I think all of those scenarios are much more likely than something where we go into a gigantic war where we already have so many nuclear weapons that I think that would just bring about the end of times at that point or something very close to it and that doesn't really benefit anyone. So I think a de-escalation scenario would be more likely. And I expect that to happen within weeks or months rather than years. Of course, I'm just guessing here, anything can happen. But in the meantime, as all of this is going on, I do think that the stock market will continue to be very volatile. We could see huge swings up or down. But I also think that once things start to calm down or de-escalate, I do think that the stock market will just kind of move on without it. The only way that I see the stock market really crashing because of this conflict is if things escalated into a much larger war where a lot of countries got involved and then you start to see all kinds of disruptions in the economy as well, like supply chains, things that we already discussed earlier in this video. And so now you might be asking, well, you sound a little more optimistic in, in this sense, in terms of the stock market kind of moving forward and ignoring some of the conflict. You sound a little more optimistic about that. So are you buying stocks? And the answer is yes, I'm always buying stocks. I've just always been that type of investor. I, I always have a long-term mindset. And as long as I have a steady, uh, reliable job with a steady source of income, and I have savings for emergencies, and I have a large cash pile to buy stocks heavier if things go down, then I'm gonna be buying stocks because that's just how I am. I like to buy stocks, and if they go down, I buy more. But if you were to ask me, how do you feel about the macro economy and everything else that's going on? Well, I'm very pessimistic about that because I am very worried about inflation, very worried about interest rates, very worried about our debt levels, and I'm not sure how things are gonna play out, but in, it's, it's a tricky subject because basically every country around the world is printing money at this point and the US I feel is still the best place to invest. So I'm not sure how much the stock market will be affected by everything that's going on economic wise. But if I was to make some predictions, I would say that the stock market is still a bit too high and we're very likely going to see a lot of volatility, some large dips, some corrections, maybe some bear markets and maybe even a large stock market crash. It's hard to make those predictions. It's hard to know exactly when something like that would happen. But history tells us that when an economy is doing this poorly, well, a stock market crash could be on the horizon. So because of that, I put more of my monthly income into the cash portion of my portfolio. Right now, I'm at about 40% cash, which is very high. I'm normally at around 20%. So I'm much higher than normal in my cash reserves and I am buying stocks slowly in small amounts. I'm not going crazy with any of my purchases. I'm buying in small amounts. And the reason why is because if things get worse from here and the stock market goes down, I want to be able to buy heavier at those lower prices, lower my cost bases and still maintain that long-term mindset. So that's what I'm doing. Nothing has really changed for me. Those are my thoughts and opinions on everything that's been going on optimistic in the kind of conflict war situation as optimistic as you can be with people losing their lives it's so tragic and unfortunate but i think things will eventually de-escalate very pessimistic about the overall macro economy but i'm still the type of investor that likes to buy stocks and buy them slowly in these kind of situations and make sure that i have a lot of cash on the side to take advantage of any opportunities that may come in the future so anyway that's what i'm doing Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything I said. I'd love to read your comments and respond to as many as I can. Thanks again for stopping by, guys. I really appreciate all the support. I hope you're all doing well out there. And I will catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.